Miami City Commissioners have just approved a plan to move a homeless camp from its location in the city to tiny homes on a nearby island. Community activists and several homeless people, though, are blasting this idea. News Nation correspondent Brooke Schaefer is following the story. So, Brooke, what else do we know about this so-called transition zone? Well, this is where some commissioners have proposed this idea. They want to put up about 100 tiny homes in this park. You know, there's a bike trail, there's a beach. But like you mentioned, it's facing a lot of opposition. This idea would allow homeless people to come out here. They would have a place to live, eat, sleep, take a shower. And according to this plan, it would also provide some outreach services for those homeless people who do come out here. But there are people on the other side saying this is a better bad location to house the homeless. Like I said, it's home to bike trails. There's a beach here. They have summer camps. There's a lot of kids around here. And on top of that, there is a sewage plant not too far away. At this point, the idea is not finalized yet. Commissioners are still going to talk about it again in September. And we do want to mention the idea to bring it here to Virginia Key here in Florida is just one of many areas on the table right now. Nicole. All right, Brooke Schaefer live for us in Miami. Thank you for that. All right, we want to bring in our panel now. We want to talk about this on our Rush Hour Roundtable. So let's introduce you to today's panel. We have Jason Hammer, co-host of the radio show Hammer and Nigel on 93.1 WIBC in Indianapolis. Angela Sinandella, attorney and legal analyst and TikTok's premier legal voice. Jason Rance, host of The Jason Rance Show on KTTH in Seattle. And finally, Baron Vaughn, actor and comedian, most recently playing Bud on Netflix's Grace and Frankie. So panel, thank you so much for being with us today. Our question to you, is this a potentially viable option considering strategies in the past, you know, don't really seem to have worked when it comes to homelessness? Jason Rance, let's start with you. Yeah, I mean, it all depends on what the rules of the encampment will be. There is a lot of valid reasons to create one of these towns, these little villages, these little town villages. When you have the services on site and you are giving people the rules and structure that they need to get their lives back in order, you got to put it somewhere. And I think most people would say we would rather that we get these people the treatment and get them the help that they need so that they can go back to a life in a home on their own rather than on the streets. Now, the difference is if there are no rules, because there are some low barrier shelters, if that's the case here, then no, it's not a good idea. Those have a tendency to fail very quickly and cause a lot of problems for the folks who are either visiting or live in that community. Angela, what do you think? Nicole, I actually found this idea kind of offensive because to me, the first thing that came to mind was like a leper colony, that we are putting these people <laughs> out of sight, out of mind. We are reducing their access to public transportation. We are not really going to be providing them those services if they are physically so divided and separate from the rest of the population. To me, I feel like quarantine and pandemic has made isolation seem normal, but homelessness is not contagious. So, Baron, I saw you nodding there to Angela. Oh, yes, I just, I, I really like that she said uh, that this seems like a leper colony. My take was that it seems a little bit more like a reality show. Like, it sounds like Homeless Island. Like, that's what it sounded like people might be opposed to it. But I didn't know, I didn't know that thing about them being separated from people. Um, I mean, I, I'm all for anything that is, you know, that is for solving the problem of housing insecurity. Um, you know, and I know that this isn't a reality show. Like for most people, this is a reality and no show. That's right. You know, but homelessness, as we all know, you know, I know we've all seen it in, in every city, each of our individual cities that, you know, it just continues to get worse. Hammer, what do you think about this? So a wise man once said, you get the government you deserve. A lot of people who don't live in the greater Miami area are going to weigh in with their opinions, and I get that. But this apparently was the best that the elected officials could come up with. I have no idea what was left on the table, what was not good enough. But if there's ever been a lesson from the movie Jaws 2, the mayor in Jaws 2 was the same as the mayor in Jaws 1, and this tells you local elections matter. If you don't like what you're seeing in this area of Miami, then you've got the opportunity to change that. Is this the best decision? I don't know. 
like Jason said, it kind of depends on how this is going to be ran. If this is going to be ran with class and dignity and people are actually going to have the opportunity to better themselves, okay, that's fine. But if it turns into some sort of hot mess and sanitary issues arise and diseases start to get spread and violence starts to come out, then obviously changes have to be made. This goes on to the people of Miami. We can all complain about it. We can like it. We can not like it. But you get the government you deserve. Your elected officials said this is the best we can do. I have no idea what the other options were. Well, and, and by the way, it's separated by design. That's intentional. The, the whole idea is that these are communities of people who will have each other's backs and be there for each other on top of getting the services delivered to them where they are. It's much different than when you just leave people in certain circumstances where they have to go from place to place many times in different buildings across town to get the services that they need. This is supposed to be to avoid that. And again, if there are rules in place, this is a good idea that has been used across the country, including in Texas, and it's starting here in Washington state as well. It actually works. I just have to jump in here and say that I am amazed by the amount of trust that our, my panelists have in our elected <laughs> officials. If I'm going to bring back internment camps, I mean, that's something that elected officials thought were okay. This is not an internment not camp. That, that is an absurd comparison. This is not an internment camp. If we are going to trust our elected officials on how to solve a problem that they believe affects only a very small part of the population that likely does not even vote is not a comparison I'm comfortable with. You know what, Angela, you brought up internment camps there, but that's why I want to bring up the fact that, <laughs> you know, some people, I think, see this as a way of saying, okay, there's this problem, it's a problem that is getting worse, so we're going to round up, and mind you, initially, this would only be for 100 homeless individuals, so we're going to round them up, and we're going to send them over there. <laughs> I mean, I think some people think, you know, look at it that way. We'll, we'll just we're, put the problem over here. It's not a good look. Uh, again, it's not a good look. This is voluntary. The real reason we're putting them over there is to keep them off the street so that aesthetically these streets remain beautiful. And I understand that. I live in New York City. It's a problem for real estate, for developers everywhere. We're there when there are homeless people just, you okay. know, essentially preventing commercial business from happening. So I we'll, understand. We'll keep, we'll keep them on the streets. We'll keep them on the streets then. We'll allow them to sleep on sidewalks and in alleyways and not get them the help that they need. I believe right. the amount and of money the sarcasm didn't come all the way through with the elected officials line. I don't think somebody picked up on the sarcasm. <laughs> I'm not saying believe in the elected officials here, but these are the people that they had the faith in, and this was the plan that they come up with. So what are the other options then? Because here in my city, in Indianapolis, when we host major events, whether it's the Final Four, which we host on a regular basis, we've had a super here what I've seen the uh, yes. leaders do here is just move the homeless exactly. to a different area just yeah. move them without some sort of supervision yes so use this enormous amount of money that's going to be spent in building a separate encampment provide them with job training services actually provide the services you promise instead of using it to separate them on an island away from the rest of the population Yes, Barrett, as, long as, the homeless are, are, as long as the homeless are treated as a problem, as opposed to homelessness itself being the problem, there's always going to be a problem with the way that we handle them. That, I kind of object to that language of homeless being connect, uh, connected to uh, dangerous sharks. Uh, I, I don't know that a mayor can actually uh, do anything about a shark problem. All right, panel. Uh, yeah, but we can do lively. something about the homeless problem. Lively. Yes. And, and that's the thing. At some point, you know, there has to be some type of viable solution. Now, what that is, I would say, based on today's discussion, uh, may be up for debate. All right, uh, panel, we are going. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.